Dubbed the unofficial archivist of the Caribbean cultural scene by his friend Sam Savon, Andrew Salki preserved not only his own literary drafts, diaries, and wide-ranging correspondence, but also rare printed ephemera, news cuttings, and project files and sound recordings. His archive is therefore also a great source of research for the network of the Caribbean diaspora as they left Britain and moved all over the world. I'm Eleanor Casson. I'm a manuscripts cataloger at the British Library. Today I'd like to give you a sneak peek into the archive to look through three collection items which I hope will inspire you to explore the collection yourself. The archive explores the variety of his writing, his contributions to the Caribbean literary community through his involvement with the Caribbean artist movement and black publishing in Britain. The archive spans from 1949, before his move to Britain, and ends after his death in the early 2000s. So Andrew Salki was a freelance writer for the BBC Overseas Service, which included the African Service, Caribbean Service and World Service. So in front of me is a BBC notebook where Salki kept track of his payments for his freelance work for the BBC Overseas Service. It's a really interesting notebook because it gives you an indication of how regularly uh, Salki was writing for the BBC Overseas Service and how varied the uh, radio programmes were that he was writing for. What's also really exciting about this notebook is that he lists the people that he was interviewing or writing articles about, and it includes a really diverse range of notable people, including Chinua Achebe, Winston Churchill, Martin Luther King, amongst others. So this is the notebook for unpublished children's novel Lisito, in which Salki developed his ideas for the novel and the characters that would be included in the story. The novel follows the real-life story of the assassination of a young boy called Lisito in Nicaragua. This notebook is really interesting because it shows you the level of detail Salki went into when researching his novels, particularly for this story which is based on a real-life situation. This Guardian clipping shows an image of the National Front and the Somoza regime uh, against the People's Party. It documents the structure of the events in the novel uh, and explains uh, his thought processes behind his decisions. So another fascinating item from the collection is this essay that Salki wrote in 1993, An Utterable Woe, and as you can see, uh, we have got the progression of the draft from first stages on scrap paper to working draft to the finished article. It is not entirely clear whether this was an essay that he wrote or an, a talk that he gave, potentially at Hampshire College. The essay explores Salki's feelings of imposed exile from Jamaica, his uh, experiences in the UK and the US, uh, and his uh, memories of Jamaica and of home. He would often staple um, smaller pieces of paper to larger pieces to bring together an idea. This is the second draft of the essay, but I think this particular second draft is very interesting because he decides to remove the subheading of skies change, migrating hearts don't. And I find this interesting because that really sets the tone of this essay. The Andrew Salki Archive joins a growing collection of archives relating to Black British and Caribbean culture and writing at the British Library. Other archives include the Andrew Levy Archive, the James Berry Archive and the Wasafiri Magazine Archive. 